Hi, this is Martin Drummond with Progressive News. It's Sunday, August 18th, 2019. And uh, today's program goes out to somebody I admire, uh, President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela. And I'd like to try and uh, give him some advice. This is just a Google ad, so just ignore that. All across the immense region. Okay. Hang on a second. This Caracas restaurant sells pastries called empanadas. Like other businesses, it accepts electronic payments, but there's still many customers who prefer paying in cash, in US dollars. Every day people ask whether we take cash, but we obviously don't accept large bills. All our food is cheap. Dollars are accepted just about everywhere in Caracas, even at this market. This trader doesn't want to be filmed. At first, it looks like the eggs are being paid for with the bolivar, the national currency. But it turns out to be US dollars. There's more to this trend than just the collapse of... Uh, this is a matter of national security. Learn from the neocons, Mr. Maduro. Uh, you need to send the police out and gather up every dollar and have a huge bonfire, a huge rally, call out your people, get them all in Caracas with you and burn all of the US dollars. Then you have to say that uh, you just set your, your bolivar, one dollar, one bolivar. You say one bolivar is equal to one dollar. You just do it. You don't listen to all the critics. You don't listen to all the capitalists in your country. You just do it. You just do it. And, and then you, uh, any stores that are just for the rich, because I see that that's what's happening, you know? This stuff right here. But the greenback is clearly being circulated here. They are using, the capitalists and the rich in your country are using the, the, the dollar to subvert your economy and to make it so that the rich can continue and the rich and their cronies, their thugs, their, their followers who do their dirty work so that they can continue to have the lifestyle that they had before you instituted socialism to, to help the poor, before you started building houses for poor people, uh, providing food for poor, poor people. You need to make that, you need to continue to do that. You need to continue to make poor people uh, less poor until they're not poor anymore until they have a decent life in Venezuela but this shit this shit this is America right here some Venezuelans send remittances home in US dollars stimulating the import market there are no shortages in this Caracas supermarket but the imports here are two or three times more expensive than those in Europe or in the U.S. Some stores only... These are Americans living in Venezuela. And they refuse to live as Venezuelans. You know, and accept the fact that the country's developing, right? I mean, yeah, at some point, 
you'll want to have stores like this for everybody where everybody can go and do their shopping and they're allowed to buy whatever they need, right? Please sell imports. For they go need. But right now, you can't do that because you have a history of capitalism in your country. So you have uh, a history of uh, horrible poverty created by the, the ultra-rich who owned the gas and owned everything. You need to break free from that. And you need to do so by getting rid of this... In, in the United States, we call it two Americas. You know, there's one whole apparatus, one whole system where the rich are able to get everything they want. And then the rest of the people live a whole different life. Now, it's not as bad as it is in your country. But, and since Chavez became president, you've improved it a lot, right? You've cut poverty in half. You've cut homelessness in half. Well, you need to cut it in half again and half again and half again until there's, you know, until there's just a few poor or people who are homeless and have trouble getting food and maybe electricity and things like that, water, and then you just eliminate them too and they're gone. No more people in the country without a house to live in, without a, a, uh, without some form of transportation, buses or a uh, scooter or whatever, whatever. Now, how you develop all that uh, you definitely need and, and where is the one I had? So like, like, get on YouTube. I'm serious, man. Get on YouTube and look at because I, I sense the fact that you've got two cultures, right? You've got a kind of a culture that is very green. The indigenous and the browner people. And I don't think you want to wipe out your rainforest. Uh, as opposed to Brazil and Colombia that seem to be burning the land up. Uh, you guys don't seem to want to. So if you want to live in the trees and have the lives like of modern indigenous, modern brown people, then you're going to have to uh, develop that technology. So you're going to have to learn to live in the trees, right? That means you're going to learn have to learn how to farm in the trees. So you're going to have to develop ways to do that. And it may be impossible, I don't know, but, uh, where is my, you can go here. Uh, to Green Power Innovations, uh, Green Innovations News Network, or you can go to any, uh, place that, uh, you know, we groups like mine here on Facebook this is on Facebook Green Innovation News Network and uh, I get into all kinds of stuff somebody else posted this one Michelle Bivens sounds interesting this is something I posted. Micro, micro hydro electric power system. Uh, the sky, or people, group of people, they produce their own electricity through water power. And there's plenty of that in your country. And these are small technologies. These are technologies that are fully explained in these videos. You can get this stuff and start working on it. And I think that's the solution for Venezuela. 
rather than thinking big, like huge, I'm not saying don't, you know, produce huge hydroelectric plants because you got lots of water, but think small, you know, use, do uh, thousands and thousands of small ones. Um, this is how to, how you can burn waste oil which is the equivalent of oil that comes out of the ground. Your dirty oil that comes out of the ground can be used. And it can be used and, and it doesn't even produce a lot of uh, uh, pollution because it burns completely. You see what I'm saying? The, uh, and, and if that doesn't work for you, there's also gasification. Now, I don't know, uh, you know, here's something about how to take plastic waste, which is a huge issue for the world. We're dumping plastic in the oceans. We're finding out now that people are suffering from lung cancer because of small particles of plastic that get in the air. We're talking micro. Uh, Anyway, you, you might want to look at all this, uh, here Terrence posted something about water from air. Now, your country is young. It doesn't have a lot of these problems. But like gasification, which, ah, screw it, I'll just go to it. So this is about growing plants without soil. And it's something you might want to think about. You know, what I'm going to tell you now is something you need to take to heart. And that is that the solutions are always right in front of you. Right in front of you. The only reason that they don't seem to be right in front of you is because you don't see them. So, you know, and then when you see them, you're like, oh my God, the solution, look. This, this wrench right here will do exactly what I need it to do, or this piece of paper over here is exactly what I need to finish, or this little bit of information that I, it was right there in front of me. And you'll find that out. And, uh, you know, you need to, you need to work with the capitalists. You need to get them to give up on this two-tier system where they all get to have everything they want and everybody else has to suffer for it. You have to get them to give that up. And I know you're doing a great job of doing that. But in the end, you're letting it go so far that you're letting them win. The point is to get them to accept that you're going to raise the poor out of poverty. Uh, now, they're upset because they see uh, you trying to impinge on their system, but the fact is, is their system has always, as long as the United States has been in the country, and Europe's been in the country, uh, span the Spanish and you're part Spanish, you're not all, I mean, I can look at your face and I can tell. Ever since then, ever since, you know, people stopped living like the indigenous in the forest, and they had a way of living, ever since then, the uh, rich basically, they lived, they created their lifestyles, which I'm not condemning that, but they did, what I'm condemning is they did it at the, you know, they're taking away, as it develops and develops over time, they're completely wiping out the rest of the people in favor of themselves. And they don't see any way out. Do like I suggest for the United States. Guarantee them a certain lifestyle. Tell them, look, we will make sure as long as you stop interfering with what we're trying to do, which is lift the 
general population out of poverty and improve, you know, give them the, what they need, right? That's all you're saying. And it's right. You know? Nicholas, you're right. You're absolutely right. May, may I call you Nicholas? <laughs> I feel almost like you're a friend. Because I know how much we agree on everything. I even agree with you the way you're doing things. Except for that you're letting them get away with too much. You're letting the rich get away with too much. What you need to do to solve that problem is what I just said. Is you need to guarantee them a certain sense of security. So you need to guarantee them that no, they're not going to get to have their fancy stores where they can buy their Nutella and stuff like that. But they will get to live a certain lifestyle that is better than everybody else's in the country. Not all of them, because we're just talking about the ultra-rich who are paying off the, the majority of people who, who are on their side. And it, I hate to say it, but it almost seems to me like 50% of the country. You know, this is the problem with democracy, right? 51% of the people can vote to just have... 49% of the people put in internment camps and liquidated, right? Killed. I mean, that's the nature of democracy, right? The majority rules. Well, what if the majority turns out to be evil? <laughs> you know, what if they decide that, uh, what if they face a crisis and they decide, well, the only solution is to just liquidate. 49% of our people, so 51% of the people get together and vote to liquidate the other 49%. So, you can't let the rich buy off. Because that's what they're doing, basically. They're, they're buying off a certain seg demographic certain segment of your population I'm willing to bet that when you look at that you're gonna find out the darker your skin the more you fall into the 49% right so let's be realistic right now what I said was is that you need to guarantee them not, not all of them, not the ones they bought off, but the ones who are doing the buying, right? So the people who own these stores like this, people who own the media, all of those people, they need to be bought off. Then you take the people who they've bought off and you buy them off. It all sounds very capitalist, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's not. I mean, those people are forced to be the followers of the, the capitalists. They, they feel like they have no choice. That's their way of surviving. You just need to make their way of surviving as surviving through you and this new... Uh, socialism that you're developing, this housing that you're creating for people, this food that you're creating for people, uh, this monetary system that you're creating for people. So, you know, we've gone right around, we're back to the monetary system, uh, and I absolutely, one Bolivar has to be made to equal one dollar. So, Here's an idea, it just came to me. So you solve your problems through regulation where it comes to the monetary system. You tell people in shops that they will accept the Bolivar one for one and you'll have to redo the whole paper system all over again 
because obviously the hundred and thousand dollar or thousand Bolivar bills or you can just tell everybody look 100 equals 1 right or something like that however you want to do it to where uh, the most bills out there are equal to the dollar however you want to do it you can do it just so that it works and then you tell all the shopkeepers and you tell all the people who buy stuff those shopkeepers have to accept the one Bolivar just like they would accept the one dollar. Don't even try to get rid of the dollars if you don't want to. Although as a symbolic thing I think it'd be great if you go out and gather all the dollars you can and burn them in the middle of the street. You know, in the center of Caracas. But tell the people who and when the people go into the store and somebody says no we're not that's a hundred Bolivars and we don't accept it as one dollar tell them to go straight to the police and the police will come in and make sure that all these stores accept one Bolivar at the same you know, because they're pro obviously pricing things on the shelves cheaper for people who have dollars and then making sure that dollars are coming in for those people. I mean, that's how they're subverting your system. And I'm sure you're aware of this, right? I mean, my God, if they can... Well, who was that guy? I forget who he was, but he said that why should I why would I want to have to have a war to take over a country when I can just do it with their monetary system and that's what they're doing to you in Venezuela right now they're trying to subvert the whole country with dollar bills they're trying to buy the country cheap that's what Americans always do they try to buy cheap and sell high that's capitalism and it sucks it doesn't recognize any facts of economics like the facts that people need food to live and and housing and and all this stuff and that in the system it's all done with dollars with with m the monetary system and the monetary system can't be manipulated and screwed with by the rich for their own uh, for their interests right so that they can be in power and that's exactly what they're doing right now you can't let them do this Nicholas so do do like I said set the Bolivar you can take the hundred dollar the hundred Bolivar bill and say it's one Bolivar you can just do that it's your country you control the monetary system legally get your courts and uh, you know the proper uh, elected uh, government there to uh, to back you and you just say whether I don't care whether it's the one Bolivar bill or the or you can just say that every Bolivar bill one to a million or whatever is a one Bolivar bill and it buys just like a one dollar bill that would solve that problem right there and then you could issue uh, a different 10 Bolivar and a different 20 to expand on that all the old money would just be one Bolivar bills that probably would work best and then you enforce that in the stores now what will they do? Oh, all of a sudden, instead of being one dollar, it'll be ten dollars, or it'll be twenty dollars. But first of all, you have to make sure that's enforced for everybody. You need to send in you, you need to send in spies to the stores, to make sure they're doing what you want wanting done, and uh, and bust them, throw them in jail when they don't behave put somebody else in charge of their shop 
one of your own people, right? And this is just a legal thing. This isn't communism. This is a, a national security deal to take back your own currency and make your own currency work within your own country. You can't tell me that a country doesn't have a right to control its own currency in the interests of its own people. Of course it does. And you do. And you need to do it. And look, I hate to criticize you, Nicholas, because I think you're great. But you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to stop sitting on your hands hoping that everything is going to fix itself. You need to get in there and do this. And you need to do all these other things that I'm talking about. You need to, you know, come up with different... You need to look at, at YouTube. So every problem that you have, you need to get on YouTube and see if there's a, select, a solution. See, now this is very... Some of these, like this one. That looks really cool. I mean, he's doing it without soil. I've watched a lot of these, so I can tell you what kind of stuff there is. Now, you may not need this. I mean, you're a young country, you probably have plenty of soil. But this is just an example. Um, Let me show you something that would be useful. So, gasification. Because you've got lots of bio stuff and you want to keep it. This is the way to do it, through gasification. This is a way of producing gas. from, And you would end forest fires because the people would be employed to gather up all the small stuff that starts and makes for forest fires real big. Although I don't hear a lot about forest fires in Venezuela. And you burn it in such a way through this, these apparatuses. And this Mr. Teslonian, you really got to check him out. And when what comes out at the end is a gas that can be burned in, uh, you know, like a electric generator or something, and it it burns it completely. So there's hardly any pollution. And in the end, what you end up with is what is called a carbon neutral system. You see, technically, when you burn trees, if you don't burn them all, you know, if you're constantly growing new ones, it's carbon neutral because the trees are soaking up the carbon, right? It's a, it's a circular system. So the, uh, but when you do gasification, well, you, you, you know, you've got scientists probably a lot smarter than I am. Look at this. This is some massive gasification process. Let's look at that real quick. What will power our future? How will we heat our homes? Light our cities? Deliver energy for industry and innovation? Find fuels to drive our machines? build our highways and carry our goods. There's no single solution, but there is a proven technology that can do all these things and more. Protecting our environment, generating new jobs, securing energy for America's future. Gasification is an environmentally friendly way to transform any carbon-based raw material without burning it. 
Instead, you create a chemical reaction by combining refinery waste, coal, forestry wastes, or even trash with oxygen and steam under high pressure. This process breaks everything down into molecules so you can safely remove any pollutants or impurities. What's left is a clean synthesis gas you can use to generate electricity, create liquid fuels, fertilize. Okay, you can find all this and watch all this. But what I'm saying is, you know, your problems uh, are going to be many and different and the same. You know, sure, you're going to have the same solutions like gasification and water power, hydroelectric, all this stuff. But you're going to come, come across lots of things. And I'm telling you, man, you can get on YouTube and you can find workable solutions. Not the stuff where you get on here and they explain to you how to do things. But they don't explain to you actually how to do it, right? It's kind of like sticking it in your face, right? Sticking it to you. They're like, here's the solution, but we're not going to tell you how to do it, you know? Like, your solution is to build an F-15 fighter so you can protect your airspace. But we're not going to explain to you how to build an F-15 fighter. Okay, so that doesn't work. You get on YouTube... You've got regular people like you and me who are brilliant. They really are. And they show you everything. And they do it with things that you can uh, come up with. And, like I said, the, the solution is always right in front of you. So this stuff, it might be in your dumps, right? Where you're dumping trash. Your landfills. And it turns out you can just pull it out. And use it to solve your problem. So as you come across your problems, whether it's providing food for your people or providing electricity to your people or providing clean water to your people, you need to get on here and, and do the search. Gasification, I just did the search. So now you may not be able to figure something like that out to put in the name gasification. But once you get on here, you'll find these things just pop up for you, depending on your problem. They just, they just come to me anyway. I hope that if you can't talk to me, I'll, I'll try and do it for you. Uh, what else can I do for you? Um, I don't know. There's other things I can do. I, I'm I am a genius in your idea of a genius and the people's idea of a genius I do invent I'm very creative in ways that actually work you know that, that help so if you want to ask me anything I'm always here uh, you can find me, I'm Martin Drummond, on, uh, on Facebook. You're welcome to contact me through Facebook. If you're smart, you'll tell me who you are. Because I want to help the Venezuelan people, I want to help the Nicaraguan people, I want to help the Colombian people. Of course, they got to get rid of the shitty government. The Brazilians, same problem. You know, want to help everybody. Really do. Not worried about myself. I'm not... Don't want any money from you. Just want your friendship. And I'd be more than willing to advise you and... Uh, and, and do some research for you. So you say maybe you're not having the same luck I do finding different kinds of solutions I'll I'll do it for you you know I'll I'll research it for you I'll find the solutions for you you just need to take your wealth and invest it in it so that it pays off so that my hard work pays off and I have to tell you I have 
things that I have that would blow your mind. But I can't talk to you about them here because if I was to uh, share them, all that would happen is the capitalists would come in and take everything, take everything away for themselves. So I'm not willing to do that. You know, I'm not willing to openly trade my, uh, not, not even trade, because I don't want anything for them. Except for, obviously, I would love to get what I'm capable of giving. Uh, see, a lot of the things that are really valuable that I have come up with, I can't do by myself. You know, they need to be done in the framework of, like, a whole community working together to produce them. But I would only give them to a community that would produce them for everybody in the community. I wouldn't ever give them to uh, a community where just the few in the community would get those gifts, right? I just wouldn't do that. That's just, that's how everything works now. And I don't like that. So I'm not going to do that. Not the shit that's in my head. I have some stuff that would blow your mind. How about immortality? Huh? I got that one. I have the physics. That will change the world. You know, the way that supposedly Newton and Einstein supposedly changed the world, although they didn't really actually do anything. They're just representative of the propaganda, right? Gee, why is it that two kind of cute little old guys, Einstein and uh, Freud, why are they cute little Jewish guys? Cute little Jew. They look like the Muppets, right? You know? Well, because it's all been just a big game for the Jews and the... And, and yeah. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. I mean, the... The Jews... Pr pr uh, what do they do? They promote themselves. And yeah, there's always Jews who don't. And there's a big difference between Jews and Zionists, okay? But you can't expect Jews not to promote themselves. Any group is going to promote themselves. They're not going to do it openly. They're going to do it quietly. So why do we think, when we think of smart people, why do we think of them as Einstein and Freud? Because they're actively being promoted, not by just the Jewish community, but there's a bunch of Christians who, who promote them. In the end, the Christians are probably the ones more responsible. So this represents a union between Christians and Jews that I think is obvious. It's the same or very similar to the relationship between Zionists and neocons, neoconservatives, Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, Trump, right? Well, I have a very I, I guess it's part of quantum physics or something, but I don't like quantum physics because a lot of it doesn't make sense. But my physics would change the world. Because how you think of m the material world has an influence on, uh, you know, it's reality based, what I've come up with. It might not seem like it. But it is. Okay, so anyway, I have... My main point is that I have all these... Uh, gifts for the world. 
but I'm not willing to give them to people who are just going to capitalize on them themselves. I mean, they probably wouldn't even give me credit for being the one who's, you know, really backed them, these ideas. Even though I believe these ideas have been around for thousands of years, probably the cavemen were sitting around there in their caves with their fires thinking about them. And I don't hide them all. Uh, I make it plain on, on a lot of uh, places, like on Facebook mainly, where I have groups. I decided to document it there and on YouTube because it's just a good place to document. You know, everything's dated, everything's, of course, they can rip it out from under you, but, uh, but I haven't done that with the important stuff. I've done that with the important stuff that is like physics and stuff like that because I don't think uh, that those kind of things should be should remain hidden and I don't plan to hide the rest of it like the stuff on uh, immortality not not forever obviously I'm not going to let it die with me that would be cruel I'll pass it along to somebody who feels the same way I do you know who I am confident and I'm capable of uh, proper confidence. As in, I'm capable of figuring out whether somebody's just trying to snow job me into, you know, grabbing my, my ideas. And somebody who legitimately cares. And I'll find people like that if I can't find governments and, and communities who will do that for me. I'll find uh, uh, maybe just an individual to pass along what I know who will manage it in the way that I want it managed, as in not letting the rich just grab it for them and whoever they decide to reward with it, right? Anyway, so that's as far away as from what I was talking about as I'm going to get. And I'm talking about that because I'm saying to Mr. Maduro, hey, I'm here. I have special gifts for people like you and the Venezuelan people who I trust. Because I can see, watching every day, how trustworthy and how good you and your people are. I know things can change, you can end up being bad, but for now, that's what I see. People like you, Daniel Ortega, uh, I see him as being a very... Now, you may make mistakes, uh, everybody does probably, I guess. but. People like you, I, I really want to uh, eventually pass my gifts on to. And I, I see my gifts as making the people who I give them to the most powerful people in the world. And isn't that the goal here? To put power into the hands of people who will work for the betterment of the people, right? Of the people who are in poverty and suffering and put upon. They're, they have the neocons and the, the rich, they have their boot on their neck. Those are the people who I want to empower. And so that's why I hold back my, my greatest gifts, because I want to give them to those people. And how to do that, it's very difficult, because obviously the rich are sitting right above us right now listening to everything we say wanting to figure out how to keep that from happening wanting to get all those gifts given to them and not to you so you know and mind you I want this to work out 
so that those gifts come back to the American people. They're my people. I'm doing this, I would be doing this. It, I, you know, the first thing the rich are gonna say is, oh, he doesn't care about his own country. No, I do. As a matter of fact, that's all I'm thinking about. But it's, it's not gonna work by giving the, I mean, we've seen what half, what the rich do with their power and their money and all this stuff. Nothing ever changes for the rest of the people. This income inequality. The Amer American people aren't allowed to rise up. Their situation isn't allowed to improve. So, uh, you know, if I could help the world, then the world could help my people. Nobody else is going to help my people. Now, we're doing everything we can to help ourselves. But we live in a box. And isn't that really true about the whole world? I mean, the rich figured it out a long time ago. Planet is one point in space. It's got a certain number of square miles across the surface. It's got a certain amount of water. It's got a certain amount of fresh water. It's got a certain amount of variable soil. It can produce a certain amount of food. It can, you know, they figure that out. They understand math. They understand the value of math and science and all that and planning and everything. And they decided to take that model of our world, which is very accurate according, I mean, they got satellites looking at it and everything else, and employ it to their benefit and no, they haven't completely done it to the detriment of the people. The people, they depend on the people. The people do all the work. They do all the thinking for them. They do everything. So they're not going to completely, uh, you know, in the richest country in the world, that they, that's what they tell us anyway, they're not going to completely shove, you know, 70% of the population into the Stone Age. They're going to keep them. Uh, all you have to do is watch. If you want to understand that, you can understand it by watching that uh, that one uh, video. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Carlin. I think we're done with the, we can always come back to it. Yes, we always have to see the capitalist bullshit. See how they force it in your face? I mean, no matter what you do, they use the system to force the uh, people in order to make money, they force force it in your face. A reason. There's a reason. There's a reason for this. There's a reason education sucks. And it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. 
They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hard-working people, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. Man, you know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Okay, and the first thing you're going to say is, well, he got rich. Yeah, but that's nothing to do with it. I mean, in a capitalist system, you know, there's ways of getting rich. Uh, not for everybody, but some of us. You know, it, that's how it works. It's just a tiny percentage of people actually make it. And yes, there are people out there, and the system is created in such a way to uh, reward uh, loyalty and punish disloyalty. Right, so they did everything they did to punish him because he wasn't part of the club because he rocked the boat. He's like me, he's the person who rocks the boat uh, because we don't like what we see. Right, so uh, you know, I mean, that's just how it works, it's just how it works in the capitalist system and uh, so you know I want to find a way to everything I've been talking about talking about to uh, and obviously I haven't talked to any Venezuelans or anything like that yet but I would love to I would love to and my government the the assholes the members of the club go fuck yourselves man you don't have any right to tell anybody in this country how to uh, run their government. It's our government. You just have it because you stole it. And you think that by saying, oh, well, possession is nine-tenths of the law. That's bullshit, man. That's a bullshit statement. That's like saying, oh, because I stole it from you and I ha now have it in my hand. It belongs to me. Bullshit, man. What, what kind of nonsense fucking bullshit are you basing everything on? I mean, isn't that really what's happening here? Aren't the rich basing all of their arguments for their legitimacy and uh, their legality and everything? They're basing all of that on arguments that we all know are bullshit at their very basic they are what we call intrinsically bullshit right so anyway hope you uh, enjoyed the segment thanks for watching